welcome to Got It On With Will. This is your host, Josh Pesson. Superheroes often come with origin stories. When the pandemic hit in 2020, New York's Chinatown suffered a serious financial blow. Restaurants closed and many workers lost their jobs. One worker stood up and became the superhero that his community desperately needed. It is my sincere pleasure to introduce to you today's very special guest, Mr. Leland Yu. Welcome. Thanks, Josh. Start with your childhood. How was it? I'd call it an interesting one. Born and raised in New York City, mm -hmm. but spent time in a couple different places. Uh, Staten Island, early life, actually. Oh, what part of Staten um, Island? Mariner's Harbor, I think. That's what the neighborhood's called. Is that near Forest Avenue? Forest and South Avenue. Yeah, I lived in Staten Island for eight years. It was a great experience. A totally different world than like Brooklyn. How was that? How was it living there? It was okay. So, I mean, basically my parents, when they were together, they, you know, they wanted to have a house and a yard and all that. So they bought a house in Staten Island, mm -hmm. um, I think right before I was born. So that's where, that's the house that I grew up in actually. Mm -hmm. But interestingly, I never went to school in Staten Island. Mm -hmm. So I would always have to commute with my mother Wow! out to the city. How did you commute? My mom drove mm -hmm. uh, every day. Wow. Rush hour traffic, in and out. For uh, the love of her son, you know, parents have to make a commitment. Um, you know? Well, she also worked in Chinatown. Yeah, uh, okay. So my mom's a retired public school teacher. Oh, that, um, that's what she did, right? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So she taught at uh, Chinatown Elementary School. Mm -hmm for over 30 years. Wow. Um, so she would drive out, drop me off at uh, a different elementary school, also in Chinatown. Right. And then she would go to work at her school. When did you move back to Brooklyn? So Brooklyn is more recent, actually. Mm -hmm. Starting from early life to now, uh, you know, childhood and maybe preteen years where I lived in Staten Island. Um, but like I said, we would commute all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so I. We'd basically be in Staten Island just to sleep. Hmm, um, I see. You know, and then always back out. Um, so that was like my early childhood. And then when I got older, you know, I made friends um, in Chinatown, um, in Manhattan. And obviously I got older, I wanted to hang out. Yeah. So I wanted to stay in the city longer. So I started staying in Chinatown uh, more often with mm -hmm. my grandfather. Um, so my grandfather lived um, uh, at the apartment that we still have in our family on Mott Street. Wow. But it's, it's, it's the same apartment my mother grew up in, actually. Wow. Um, so my grandfather was living there, um, and I would stay with him a lot um, because I would hang out in Chinatown with my friends and play at the parks. And... So what kind of uh, sports did you play or activities? A lot of basketball, mm -hmm. a lot of handball, and inevitably run around a lot, but, you know. Basketball, you say, uh, was this? Yao Ming? Yeah, Yao Ming. Uh, was that when he was becoming big in the sports? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 about the same time. Mm. I think that's when I was in middle school. That's when I started playing basketball. Yeah, uh, he was a good role model, I guess, for the Asian American community to encourage them to play more basketball. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess. Mm. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, I, I was actually more into handball. Ah. Um, you know, I liked, uh, it was very, it's a very New York City sport. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, love, I love playing that. Um, so, yeah, I, I was always playing sports a lot. Uh, I played volleyball mm -hmm. also in high school. I went to Brooklyn Tech. You know, so in New York City, there's specialized high schools, and you have to take a, I forget the name of it, but specialized high school test yeah. to get into these schools like Stuyvesant, Bronx Science, Brooklyn Tech, and now there's a number of others now. Right. Didn't make it to Stuyvesant. Okay. You know, but uh, got into Brooklyn Tech, so that's where I went. What did you want to study like after after high school? So I was particularly inspired by my English teacher, mm -hmm. high school English teacher. So and my mom's a retired public school teacher, so right. I wanted to become an English teacher. Hmm. Okay. That's what my goal was going into college. Um so I did major in English in college. Um I went to SUNY Binghamton. Mm -hmm. Come by senior year. I, my mind started wandering a little bit, uh, so I kind of had second thoughts. I thought, do I really want to be a teacher or do I really want to go straight to grad school? So right out of college, I, um, I f 
I took the written exam to become, to become a, a firefighter. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought, oh, this is a wonderful opportunity to work for the city, to retire with a pension, have all these great benefits. Right. Um, something that my mother really wanted me to do, like, because she, she had a city job, right? So yeah. she would always advocate for how wonderful the benefits are. Yeah. So I thought, okay, maybe I don't need to become a teacher. I'll become a firefighter. Um, and I, that, really, that was really appealing to me. Um, at the time, at least. So I took that test. I didn't do really well. Mm -hmm. So that was, there was kind of no hope there at the time. Um, so I took, I did a lot of odd jobs. I finally ended up in the restaurant industry because everyone needs to <laughs> eat. Um, I always enjoyed cooking at home with my mom. Mm -hmm. I liked the hustle and bustle of the restaurant industry. Uh, I had yeah. a relative who, who owned a cafe in East Village and I used to work there in high school. Hmm. Um, so there was, there was some interest there already. Right. So I finally just applied to some restaurants to work at in the kitchen. Right. And I landed on one in Brooklyn called Insa Korean Barbecue. And that was the beginning of my cooking career. Um, wow. 2016, I think. Started from the bottom. I just plated cold food and mm -hmm. put it on a plate. Uh, actually, well, really, I, all I did was put raw meat on like a plate. Mm -hmm. That's Korean barbecue. You barbecue raw meat. Oh, it's raw? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you've been to Korean barbecue. No, I haven't. Oh, you've, it's on my to-do list. Yeah, you have to. I mean, it's it's a uh, it's it's a must try. Uh, so basically, servers or you, the customers themselves, will cook your barbecue at your table, basically. Wow. So you order whatever meats. Let's say it's like marinated short rib or thinly sliced brisket, and then you know they'll give you the plate of raw meat, and then you kind of just grill in front of you. Oh wow. Raw meat orders would come in. I just put raw meat on a plate. So that's how I started. Uh, and then I worked my way up. Um, then I started frying food, then I started cooking food on the pan. Um, mm -hmm. So I was, uh, you know, I spent a couple years cooking um, at INSA. Um, mm -hmm. I loved it. Um, I met a lot of good people there. Um, so that was one of the best decisions in my life to just like really go for something that I had an interest in um, mm -hmm. and, and, and pursuing that. I see. Interesting. Right now it's the year 2022, three years into the pandemic. Things are much safer now, uh, more normal. Mm -hmm. uh, everything changed in 2020 when the pandemic happened. And I want to know, uh, how did it affect your job and your environment? Yeah, this is where the, all the juicy stuff happens. Right, right. So even before 2020, 2019, um, so I took the firefighter exam again in 2017 actually mm -hmm. the written exam yeah and i did a lot better mm -hmm. so that was always that was became a more serious opportunity or option for me because i knew i had a good chance yeah while i was cooking that was lingering in the background i would go to meetings over the years um where they would say okay you get ready to you should be studying or you should be working out right um so 2019 I finally attend some meeting and then they say to us, you guys right here, you have a good chance of getting in to the fire academy in April, 2020. Mm -hmm. So at that time I was working in restaurants. I was eating late, sleeping late, not really living a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. In my teenage and years, I was always an athletic person. Mm -hmm. I considered myself an athlete. And then at 2019, at that time I was out of shape, uh, I didn't run at the time. I didn't, I didn't do any activity actually, now that I think yeah. about it. So when they told us that, you know, you have a good chance of getting into the academy in April, 2020. Um, and one of the things that they impressed upon us was that you should be ready to run five miles a day. Yeah. So being a non-runner and you hear run five miles a day, that's like, that sounds impossible. Right. I mean, the most I had run prior to that was maybe three miles on a treadmill. Mm -hmm. I see. That was really kind of big push when they told me that. So this is about November 2019. I signed up for a gym. I started on the treadmill. I, yeah. And then, you know, fast forward a few months now, March 2020, that's when pandemic hits, right? Yeah. Restaurants closed, so I lose my job, right? Um, and that the fire academy is delayed because, you know, it's pandemic. So I was just one month away from finally getting to the fire academy. Wow. This is 2020, you know, and I mentioned earlier, the first time I took the exam was 2012. So for me, it was eight years in the making. Wow. Uh, and, and for me to be one month away and it gets delayed, 
The ironic thing is, uh, firefighters are considered heroes. You were one month away from becoming a hero, but as things, fortunes have it, you turn out to be a totally unexpected hero. Tell us more about what happened next. So, of course, I find myself having a lot of time on my hands now. And I decided, okay, Leland, um, you started running. You kind of like it. Um, you were once an athlete or considered yourself an athlete. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's time to get that back. So I continued to run. Um, and, you know, gyms were closed too. So I couldn't right. go to the gym. So right. running outside was kind of the only option. Yeah. Um, so I just... The safest option. Safest option. Um, yeah. So, and you, you could do it alone. Um, so I would just run almost every day or if not every day. And I would go farther and farther um, because I, each day that I would go out to run, I, it would get easier. It would be more enjoyable. I found myself, you know, um, being able to run more comfortably for longer distances. So confidence is building basically, right? right? right. And then as each day goes on, each day I, I go out there and run. And then I, then, I, then I thought to myself, maybe I can hit double digits. So yeah. I go out there and I hit 10 miles. And I wow. thought, whoa, I just ran 10 miles. And then I would think, okay, half marathon is 13.1 miles. I can try that. So I did that. And I'm like, what's going on here? So, you know, I started running a lot. And then at the same time, my, you know, the neighborhood that my family has been a part of for four generations, yeah. Manhattan, Chinatown, is suffering um, because of, you know, racism, xenophobia. Um, uh, so no one's coming to Chinatown anymore. And just generally, generally COVID, no one's yeah. going out. Right, right. So, so, you know, the world is suffering. Right. Chinatown even more so. Right, yeah. So me having spent so much time, uh, uh, much of my life there, elementary school, playing in the parks, yeah. eating, hanging out with friends, you know, I thought, I thought of how can I help? How can I give back? Yeah. Um, and I thought, okay, maybe I can use running. And then I thought, oh, maybe I can do a running fundraiser, you know, kind of like AIDS walk or much or dime style, get right. people to donate yeah. what, per mile that I cover in some distance. And then, uh, so this idea happened when I was out on a 20 mile run. Yeah. Actually, I thought, wow, I just ran 20 miles. Wow. I, wow. I have to do, I have to do something with this, you know, yeah. I can't just let this. It's a power that you yeah. Yeah. now have and you want to use it. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I, I was like, oh, running fundraiser. So I go back home and I was like, um, I go home to my girlfriend at that time. I said, I have an idea. Yeah. Um, I'm going to do a fundraiser. I'm going to run as much as I can. And actually, my original idea was 24 hours <laughs> <laughs> um, because I was getting into ultra running. Right, right. And right. I was going down like YouTube rabbit holes of ultra running, of yeah. Ironman, triathlon, right. exploring it all. Um, I decided to cut it in half, 12 hours. Um, so I decided, I, I created a running challenge called run for chinatown mm -hmm. which started out as a 12-hour challenge to cover as many miles as i can within that time frame and i got friends and family to donate a dollar per mile mm -hmm. that i would cover so on may 1st 2020 nobody knew how far i was gonna go i didn't know either um until the very end and people would say hey Leland, i didn't know you're gonna go that far I think, I think a 12 minute pace, yeah. a 12 okay. minute mile pace. Good. Yeah, that was a really life changing experience for me. Mm. Um, and also I was able to raise $25,000 in one event. Wow. Um, which was totally unexpected. Amazing. And to be quite honest, I, that was kind of unintended. You know, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't expect to raise much money. Right. Um, I had no idea. And, you know, I just wanted to, to try to help yeah. the neighborhood. You know, I didn't, I didn't have any, you know, fundraising goal, honestly. I just, right. I thought, okay, maybe a thousand dollars. Give it a shot and see what happens. Give it a shot, see what happens. Yeah. Um, you know, and what really motivated me was like, you know, I don't know if you can tell as I speak, you know, all these, there's lots of changes happening within me, you know? Yeah, yeah. Physically and mentally. Right, yeah, yeah, and I could tell. As a runner yourself, you know, you can. And also you have an emotional attachment to your family and your community. Yeah, so it yeah. was really, it was you know, the fundraising aspect was, you know, obviously what is more, I guess, 
visible, like, oh, wow, he raised $25,000, you know, and oh, and by the way, the money went towards uh, an organization called Welcome to Chinatown, also a nonprofit that started up at the early pandemic days. Yeah. At that time, they had an, an initiative called the Feed Our Heroes Fund. So yeah, that's what the $25,000 went to. It went to buying meals from supporting small business. Yeah. And then the meals went to feeding frontline healthcare workers. Amazing. Um, and I'm sure you inspired a lot of people, you know, everyone was living in fear at that time, you know, and for someone like you to not only not be afraid, but to go out there and do something about it. It's amazing. Amazing story. Well, thank you for that. You know, yeah. I, it's, it's, it's kind of, it feels a little almost like it's been a sort of a while now, you know, over two years since yeah. that happened. And um, it, it almost feels like, cause I talk about it with you here and yeah. to others. Right. It, it, it's, it's, it almost feels like uh, surreal, maybe surreal, uh, almost like it didn't happen, you yeah. know? Um, but I, I know it happened, <laughs> yeah. but uh, you know, it's, it feels surreal. Yeah. And now run for Chinatown is a thing now, right? Tell us uh, what's been happening lately. After that first 12 hour challenge. Yeah. I did another one actually a few months later, December, mm -hmm. 2021. Okay. Still neighborhood suffering businesses are closing left and right. Yeah. The streets are empty. So I thought I want to do another one because there was so much fundraising success from the first one. Yeah. And you didn't really know what you were doing the first one. Yeah. So yeah. I, you know, and I thought let's give it another shot. Um, but I added like another additional personal challenge mm -hmm. was to just run cover more distance than the first time. Right. Okay. Um, and I, well, in order to help me do that, I, I reached out to actually, well, my good friend now running coach, coach Kai, I met him through a mutual friend. I linked up with him. He helped me with my form. And then I thought, okay, I'm ready to run uh, farther than I ever have before. Wow. Uh, I ran one more mile. <laughs> <laughs> I ran 62 miles. <laughs> it's still further. Yeah. <laughs> raised about another $25,000 and, and that money went, was dispersed uh, between a couple different uh, Chinatown nonprofits. That was, I did that in December. And then after that, a couple other fundraisers, smaller ones. Um, and then finally in May, uh, oh, I'm sorry, that second 12 hour challenge was mm -hmm. December, 2020. So May, 2021 is when Coach Kai and I, we decided to start Welcome to a Monday night run with Run for Chinatown. We wanted to really share the power of running with the Chinatown community. Yeah. And just bring people to the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now Run for Chinatown has grown into a group. You know, it's not a one or two person mission now. It's, it's, it's a group effort. So we meet every Monday night. And that first one on May 10th, 2021, we started with seven runners. We didn't really know what we were doing. We just wanted people to come and then yeah. we'd, we'd figure it out. And over the weeks, more and more people started coming. 10 people, 20 people, 30 people, 40 people. Now we have about, I want to say about 150 people coming. Wow. Every Monday night. Exponential growth there. Wow, amazing. Yeah, it's, it's grown into a large group. Such an inspiration. People want to be a part of what, what you're leading, you know? I, I hope so, <laughs> but I, I think People are coming for different reasons, but there's lots of four similar reasons. Like yeah. they want to support the neighborhood. They want to improve their health. They want to run a marathon, you know, and some of them, some people want to do all of that. Some people just want to do one of those things, you right. know, so, but uh, at the end of the day, I think people are coming for the community, uh, yeah. you know, not only to support the Chinatown community, but to be part of a community where they have like a sense of belonging, um, yeah. where they meet like like-minded individuals, like similar interests, similar backgrounds, similar culture, and to be feel comfortable, you know, in a, in a in a group like that. Why the group is, has grown so much is, yeah, people people want to feel like they belong, you know. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Especially after pandemic, you know, like yeah. people were isolated for so right. long. Also, to work off the uh, COVID weight. Yeah, <laughs> some yeah. of us are still working on that, you know. <laughs> What's your uh, connection with the uh, photographer Corky Lee? Uh, I know. You uh, interacted with him, who unfortunately passed away recently. Corky passed away early 2021. Corky Lee, well-known Asian American photojournalist. Mm -hmm. And he was a friend of my mother's. He started out photographing 
the Asian American Civil Rights Movement in the 70s. Wow, what、um, a career. Yeah, so that's kind of how he, what he's known for, and really just documenting through photography the plight of the Asian American population in New York and the country. So I got connected with him before he passed. He had heard about, you know, Run for Chinatown, he had heard、yeah. about these. 12 hour runs that I was doing. So he actually he, he found me on, on that second one in December 2020. He reached out to me. He said, Leland, I want to join you for a little bit.、Uh, I feel like this is worthwhile to document. Yeah.、Um, wow. I, I'll, I'll, I'll meet you somewhere.、Uh, wow. What a great connection. Yeah. yeah so, I, and I, I kind of, I guess, funny tidbit is. I actually didn't want him to, to, to join me because I thought he was going to slow me down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he ran with you? Oh, well, he didn't run with me, but he, because when we were kind of coordinating, he said,、yeah. Leland, I'm going to meet you here. I'm、yeah. going to take some shot, shots of you, and maybe you can do this, maybe you can do that. And I、yeah. was like, I, I'm trying to run. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Because I mentioned I wanted to run farther than I did right, before. Right, 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 right.、Yeah. So anyway, it, it worked out fine because he,、uh, he found me along.、Uh, I ran from, I started in Brooklyn, and then I crossed the Brooklyn Bridge into the city. So he was like waiting for me、yeah. at, the, at the end of the bridge. And I was like, oh, Corky's here. We did like a little tiny quick photo shoot. <laughs> and then, oh, and then he actually met me along with a lot of my other friends and family and neighbors from Chinatown.、Um, Corky and others met me at the finish line of, that six, of the 62 miles、mm, wow. uh, in Chinatown、mm -hmm. on Mont Street. That's where I've been like ending all these runs is on Mott Street underneath the beautiful lanterns that are there now. Yeah, wow, that must have been some scene. Yeah, yeah. So he, a photo worthy backdrop there. Exactly, exactly. And it's like also where I spend a lot of my time、uh, uh, in Chinatown. So it means a lot to me. I see. Tell us about、uh, your relationship with your mom. I know uh, some uh, relationships with our parents, we have a special. T tell us about that. Oh, relationship with mom. I guess everyone's got a. Interesting one,、yeah. <laughs> right? Single mom,、mm -hmm. you know. Divorced or? Divorced,、uh -huh. divorced. Yeah.、Um, yeah, my parents pretty much divorced like right before I was born or、mm -hmm. when I was really young、um, because I don't really have any recollection of them being parents together. Yeah.、Um, I mean, my father was still around for.、Um, uh, oh, he lives, in, he lives in China now. They live separately, basically. So I, I, I spend most of my time with my mom.、Mm -hmm. um, so she raised me and my older brother, nine years older than me. Wow. So.、Uh, That must have been a challenge. Yeah. I, I, I think about it now. I look back on it. And, you know, because I was, you know, when I was 10, he was 19. And he was like, you know,、uh, getting in all, into all sorts of things. Yeah. I'm being like a 10 year old brat. He's like, Going、right. out, hanging out late and stuff like that. So, my mom's、yeah. had to deal with a lot.、Um, she also had to take care of like, her aging parents at the,、yeah. at the time.、Yeah. Um, she's also working full time in the school. So,、mm -hmm. she has classrooms, a classroom of kids to worry about. And not only that, she's actually started and still runs、um, an after school program for immigrant youth in the、uh, lower Chinatown and lower Manhattan area. So, she, she helped found this organization called A Place for Kids. In 1971, 1972, basically an after school program for immigrant youth. So, you know, she was doing a lot when I was growing up raising、wow. me, raising my brother,、wow. taking care of her aging parents, working、uh, in an elementary school, running、wow. the after school. Yeah. She was your superhero. <laughs> mom, 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 mom's, mom is still a superhero. Yeah. That's great. On that note, I would like to thank you, Leland, for your time today. And I would like to thank、uh, Will Sanchez and the uh, entire uh, production crew at Manhattan Neighborhood Network,、uh, Freddie,、uh, Carla, and Tiffany. And I look forward to the next episode of Gotta Run with Will. This is Josh Pesson signing off. Step by step, Leland Yu is promoting wellness, both for these walkers and for Chinatown. Yu is usually moving a bit faster. 
but he's recovering from a recent race with the people who keep him going. This is a growing community of runners uh, that I didn't really foresee. You the founder of Run for Chinatown. It started two years ago after he lost his job as a cook because of COVID, and his neighborhood was sinking under the pressure of the pandemic. Businesses were suffering, the streets were empty, morale was extremely low. You had recently taken up running, so he set a personal challenge for himself. Run for 12 hours and get his friends and family to donate a dollar for every mile. The money for an organization helping to keep Chinatown businesses afloat. Welcome to Chinatown paid struggling restaurants to cook meals for frontline workers. Nobody knew how far I was going to go. I didn't know either um, until the very end. And people say, hey, Leland, I didn't know you're going to go that far. You ran 61 miles. He raised $25,000. It worked so well the first time he did it again. Another 60 plus miles and another $25,000 for organizations building up his neighbor. Growing in popularity, you started a weekly running group last year. Runners divide into groups based on ability and then make their way through Chinatown and Lower Manhattan. The group's open to all, but you takes particular pride in encouraging Asian New Yorkers to run. I didn't see any Asian faces in running, um, so I mean, part of my personal mission is to be that Asian face or be one Asian face that you may see running a marathon. You knows running can help people both physically and mentally. Maybe I'll never know the extent of change that we're actually making here, but um, you know, if I can help change one person, two people's lives, uh, I'll, I'll be happy with that. For keeping Chinatown on the move, Leland Yu is our New Yorker of the Week. Pat Kernan, New York One. That was an exciting episode I had with Leland Yu. Wow, what a real life superhero. I am so glad that I know him and I'm so glad that I was able to spend the time today to interview him and find out more about his story. On, in personal news, I would like to let you know I'm not running any races, I'm just running to keep myself in healthy and in shape. I am going to let you know I published a book the uh, past three years called Eight Hours in Freeport. You can buy it on Amazon.com and uh, looking forward to uh, hosting the next episode of Gotta Run With Will. Had an awesome time chatting with my friend Josh Pesson. Thank you all for having me here. Uh, just a reminder, Run For Chinatown, we're a running organization that meets uh, every Monday night to empower the Chinatown neighborhood through running. We start in, and in Chinatown, we meet 6.30 p.m. at 69 Mulberry Street. Come join us and grab some dinner afterwards. But for now, gotta run.